Today I'm going to do a demonstration on how to install the latest version of OpenStack. I've made a, a couple of these videos in the past, um, but uh, I recently did it with the Akata release and uh, PackStack, which is the all-in-one uh, OpenStack installer from the RDO project, um, is a lot simpler now. Either that or it was always simple and I was doing it the hard way. So I did want to re-record it just for the new release and to show how um, th there are some shortcuts, especially when it comes to the network setup. So uh, here's a refresh of this, this video. Um, just like in the previous ones, we're going to start with the um, RDO uh, install pack stack quick start guide. So we're going to just jump right in here. So the first step so there's actually some steps before this that we need to do. Um, we need to disable Firewall D and Network Manager. So we can do that. And then we're gonna enable the ba more basic network service. And that's because uh, the dynamic nature of Network Manager doesn't play well with Neutron, um, where the basic network service just kind of does a one-shot configuration of the, serv uh, of the network at the beginning and doesn't interfere after that. Um, I also have um, SE Linux disabled, which um, I haven't tried with it on. The policies might actually match, but this has always been a pain point in the past And uh, because I am doing an all-in-one at home and it's really just for development purposes. I run it with um, SE Linux disabled just to avoid pain points because uh, when you hit those things, sometimes it's pretty hard to figure out what's going on. Um, so in order to do that, you can do git enforce zero um, to take effect immediately. And then if you go into Etsy, sys, uh, SE Linux config, you can change this SE Linux variable to either disabled or permissive. Um, and once we do that, uh, one, one thing that I did during install, so this is a, this is a fresh uh, CentOS 7.3 minimal install is what I have here. I haven't done anything else to it. Um, but I, what I did do during the install is set up um, a static IP address on the uh, ethernet interface. So I can show you what that looks like. Um, so um, you should set up your network uh, file to look something like this with your ethernet device this uid will be different but you do want to set um, um where is it here i'm looking for something in particular i'm not seeing it uh yeah boot proto nothing uh boot proto none and then uh you got to specify the ip address the the, the cider prefix gateway dns things like that so these are appropriate for my network, and uh, you need to you need to do this ahead of time. And you also want to take note of what your Ethernet uh, um, interface name is, because we're going to use it later in the pack stack configuration. So after we do that, uh, I'm going to reboot this real quick, just to make sure that Etsy Linux is disabled persistently, and that our uh, network service configures the network interfaces rather than network manager. Um, you can probably just uh, stop network manager and then start network, but doing this, make sure that you've uh, done the persistent configuration properly and it doesn't take very long. So the machine is coming back up here. You may have noticed that I've also already configured, I've, for my network, I've configured this machine with a DNS name, OpenStack. Uh, that's also something that I did during this in the installer and you don't necessarily have to do that. Just, it just makes it cleaner. All right. So we're back into OpenStack and uh, make sure that our interfaces are configured properly and they are. So now we're going to start in the, in on the um, quick start here. So we'll do VI environment and we will put these in there. All right, and then we're gonna go through, this is the rel instructions, we're gonna do the CentOS instructions here. So install the repository for Akata. All right, and then we will, uh, 
I did uh, from a local mirror here that's fully up to date with my installation, so that's not going to do anything. So we're just going to install Packstack from here. And hopefully this won't take too long. So if you're unfamiliar with Packstack, Packstack is a Puppet-based uh, installer for OpenStack. And so um, it and it makes the process of deploying all of the OpenStack components and linking them all together fairly straightforward. All right. So now that we've done that, uh, the quick start says to do pack stack all in one. And really the all in one installs more than I like. So I like to change uh, the settings on this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you do pack stack, uh, gen answer file and say in equals answer.txt. Then it'll dump all the uh, configuration variables out to this answers file and you can go in and change them, um, which basically controls how packs, the Packstack installer works. So the first change I like to do for an all-in-one is change these configs, change the config service workers from processor count, which on my machine is 12. Um, and is w way more than I need for my setup. I, d I change it to one. Um, and then I go through and for me, I just like to be able to download images and then start them up easily. Um, I don't really care about ha them having persistent block storage or um, I don't care about Swift um, or heat because I'm not deploying complex templates or anything like that. So really the setup that I'm gonna demonstrate here is basically just Glance, Nova and Neutron um, along with Horizon, which is the dashboard, and Keystone, which is required. It's the uh, identity service for OpenStack. So I kind of do a basic install, but this will let you get, you know, just download QCOW2 images from wherever and start them up in a virtualized environment. So I'm going to say no to the sender install. Glance is the image store. We do need that. Nova is compute. Neutron is network. Horizon, yes. Swift is the object store, and that Swift really does have a lot of components and probably should be a separate thing if you're deploying it in a production environment. In an all-in-one, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and is pretty um, uh, resource intensive. Um, Solometer, don't care about metering or telemetry or meter, metering as a service. Um, as you can see, there are quite a few sub-projects here. But we do want the we do want the client to install no Nagios. Okay, so that's good. So basically, the config underscore things are all the main components of OpenStack and whether you want to install them or not up at the top. And then um, the, there's one other thing that we need to change, and that is the bridge uh, iFaces. So this. Right here, the, the way I'm going to set it up, set it up. In videos past, I've created an external network, and then you've had an internal network, and then there's uh, natting and bridging between the two of them, and things like that. Um, but but you have to set up floating IPs, and for every instance that you start, if you want external access to it, you have to configure a floating IP. When really, for what for my needs, really all I wanted to do was start up a VM and it be immediately available on my external network. I always configured floating IPs with them and, it, and that was just one extra step. And so since then I've, re I've realized there's a way to uh, put your instances right on your external network and this is the way to do it. So if you look here, um, a config neutron OVS bridge mappings, you have XNet to the external bridge. You can map this XNet to a um, actual ethernet interface on your machine. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Um, so I'm gonna map the external bridge to ENP 0S25. And so that is the name of my interface here. And so if I jump back in, let me check that one more time, ENP 0S25, I typed it in right. Okay. Um, and then we also need to note this, that this is the default here, but XNet, we're gonna need this when we are configuring our external uh, network in Horizon after the installation. So keep that in mind. So after we do that, um, that it's all set up, it's ready to go. So we just need to do pack stack answer file equals, if I can type answer.txt. And then that will start the installation. So this takes a little while. I'm gonna cut and come back when it's done. 
Okay, so that finished. So uh, now it you know again gives us our IP address that we can connect to the uh, Horizon dashboard on. So we'll do that next. We're going to need something out of here. We need uh, the installer creates these Keystone RC files, one for the demo user, one for the admin user. We're going to log in as the admin user, and the password that it generated is right here. Yours will be different, so put that in admin, and now we're into our OpenStack installation. So there's some cleanup things uh, that the well, there's some things the installer puts in that I like to clean up before I start putting instances in here. Uh, one of them is the demo uh, tenant and project. So uh, I delete the demo project and then I delete the demo user. And then I go ahead and change the password on the admin user uh, so that I don't have to go to that keystone admin file every time. So just change some, that to something that's you can easily remember if I can type it twice. And then you'll have to log in with that new password after that. Okay. And uh, if we go into the admin tab here, um, the, the flavors that it preloads are typically too big for what I use it for, like this right here. I mean, that's a flavor I'm never going to use right there. So I like to clear these out and just make a couple of flavors that are appropriate for the, mach the machine I've got this installed on. So we'll call this M1 small. Uh, we'll say two CPUs, two gigs of RAM, uh, a 10 gigabyte disk. And that'll be good. Um, if we go under images here, the, it preloads the Cirrus image and I never use that. So um, Due to some permissions configuration in Horizon, even as the admin user, you're not allowed to delete that. So a little cheat for that is um, if you source the Keystone RC admin file, well, let's, we changed our password, so let's change, um, let's update our password in this file first, and you'll see my password. It's super secure here. Open stack, and then um, we'll source that. And then we'll run the OpenStack client. And we can do image list. And we see the Cirrus image there. We can just do image delete Cirrus. There we go. Put that. If we go here and refresh, our Cirrus image is gone. Uh, the networks, uh, we need to clear out the routers first. Like it creates a demo router and an external network, which isn't going to be appropriate for your network most likely. So we'll start from scratch on this stuff. Delete the routers, delete the networks. Okay, and then we're going to create a new network. We're going to call it external. And we're going to make it part of the admin project. And then we're going to, the network type here, we're going to say flat. And this is where... Um, over here in our answers file, if you remember, we, uh, this XNet right here, this is where it comes in. So we need to name our flat network this. So we're going to call it XNet there. And this is going to be shared among the projects and external. So we'll do that. Then uh, we can go create our subnet for this external network. So the subnet, um, this will be different for you. You will follow the same process, but um, depending on what uh, CIDR network you're on and things like that, you'll and what your gateway is, what your DNS server is, you'll have to do different things. So this will, this is the one for me. Um, typing this in the wrong blank there. Network address, subnet name, external. Uh, you, you can call this whatever you want. The gateway IP for my network is this. And if we go here, we, we are going to want to enable DHCP. Um, and it's going to actually assign us addresses that are appropriate for the external network since we're, we're in a flat network here. Um, and so you need to create a pool that is, if you have a DHCP server on your primary subnet, you need to choose a set of IP addresses that are outside the DHCP range of that DHCP server on your subnet. So. 
Um, for me, this is a set of addresses that isn't on, uh, that my DHCP server will never assign. And this is the DNS server for my network. So we'll create that. Okay. So now, um, because we're doing it with a flat external network, we don't have to worry about floating IPs at all, which is, for at least in my workflow, very nice since I want all the instances that I start up to be accessible in the external network anyway. So let's go into the project here. Um, if we go into images, we don't have any images. I think I have one downloaded. Let's see. Um, yes. So we'll do Fedora 26 alpha share. And we will, or this is a beta image actually. Put that in there, QCAL2, set a minimum disk size, and create the image. All right. We're also gonna need to add our um, key pair. So I have an existing one. Uh, you can hit create key pair and it will generate one for you and you can save the private part onto your drive and use that when you're SSHing into these instances. Uh, I'm gonna import mine. So for me, I'm gonna come over here, get a new, New tab, is what I meant. And then look that up. And cat sh. This will be this is the key that I use. So put that in here. Okay. okay. The next thing we need to do is set up our security groups. So by default, um, all ingress for, uh, is blocked except from other instances. So we're going to, um, and I don't use IPv6, so I'll clear those rules out too. So we're going to delete uh, both the IPv6 rules and the ingress rule for IPv4 and recreate it. We're going to add a rule, go to other protocol and leave all this blank. And that will, that basically is a rule that will let in all IPv4 traffic on all protocols. So that's, that's letting everything in and out. Again, this is not a secure setup, but this is uh, very nice if you want to just be able to start instances, then be immediately accessible on the external network and all their ports be accessible. Okay, so if we come to compute now and uh, we go to images, then we can launch this. We'll call it test. We've only got one flavor. The source image will be here and the network We've only got one, so it adds it automatically, which is the external network, and we'll launch it. And if we did everything right, this should work. All right, and it started up. So if we go in here, we should see the instance booting up, and we do, which is great. Cloud init should be installing our key and setting everything up. So let's see if we can log into this thing in fairly short order. If we go back to instances, you can see that I've got my external IP address here, so I should just be able to immediately connect to it using the Fedora user. So if I say Fedora at that address, let's see what it's doing here. Oh, I did forget a step. <laughs> All right, here, we'll try this, uh, we'll do this again. It won't take long to correct. So um, cloud init was not getting an IP address. And the reason it wasn't is because you have to change one setting in the Neutron config file for uh, allowing the DHCP metadata to pass properly. So we are going to come back over here and go to Etsy Neutron. Um, and we're gonna go, go into DHCP agent.ini and we're looking for a, uh, a setting. Let me remind myself of what it is. Enable isolated metadata. So isolated. 
here. And so it's set to false. We want it to change it to true. And then after we do that, we need to system control restart. Let's see if I can type this in right. Neutron DHCP agent. And that will cause the Neutron DHCP agent to pick up on our uh, changes to the INI file there. All right, so let's try to start this instance again. Test. Launch. Okay. Let's watch the logs. We should see CloudInit configure this IP address this time. Ah, yes, here's all our IP configuration. So now we should be able to get into this instance. So I think it got the same IP address that we had before. So let's try that again. And there we go, we're in and we have uh, that public IP, IP configured on the E0 inside the instance, and we can get to the outside, no problem. So there we go. So that, uh, you know, in a matter of 10, 15 minutes, you can set up your own OpenStack all-in-one. And uh, with this, the, the networking is largely taken care of by the installer. Um, and the, uh, you don't have to mess with floating IPs because you're dealing with a flat network on the external and uh, no firewall rules. So I find this very helpful for, for development when I just need to quickly spin up a machine and have full access to it immediately on the external network. So hopefully this was helpful.